everyone, welcome back to the next episode of the DNA Podcast. I am your loving lesbian partner who truly believes that there's that you are more important than any old motorbike, Jubidu. And I am a guy who's not going to buy an engagement ring anytime soon, so brony. <laughs> <laughs> and welcome back to the next episode of the DNA Podcast. We talk about all things anime, the good, the bad, and the weeb. How the howdy heckin' are you? Oni? I am howdy heckin' well, Drew. How are you? Um, I'm doing okay. This is really <laughs> weird. I've kind of been going through it because I'm on some medication that's like kind of fucking me up. But mm. um, yeah, no, I feel fine now. I'm actually a little warm. Ooh. My nose strip a little bit. Oh, hot in here. Oh my god, guys, I'm playing with my nipples. No, mm. I'm just kidding. Save Actually, that for I later on in the podcast. <laughs> 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 Ooh, uh, but yeah, so we have lots of fun and shenanigans in store for y'all. Um, before we start, if you guys like our usual stuff, um, feel free to like, comment, subscribe. I mean, Oni will definitely remind you at the end, but I think. It'd be cool if I remind you at the beginning. Always, yes. Never hurts to remind people too much. Exactly. So with that being said, <laughs> let us start with uh, our new segment, mm -hmm. This Week in Anime. Um, so I'm going to go first. Mm -hmm. uh, my news is rated G for gay. Lots of gay shit. Um, first, uh According to Anime News Network, the Grand Central Oyster Bay, Bay Oyster Bar and Tokyo and Restaurant Tokyo. I'm gonna read. I'm gonna read that all over again. Grand Central Oyster Bar and Restaurant Tokyo. Um, they are basically giving a banana fish menu, offering oh. that. Oh, banana fish doesn't. Okay. The anime. No, I'm not like, oh, what? Fish. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> no, you. Are you crazy? <laughs> oh my gosh. So they're offering a couple of things. So for <laughs> Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, these prices are kind of fucking ridiculous. Mm -hmm. so they offer two menus. The first menu is for one, which costs um fifty five hundred yen. Mm -hmm. Includes a Boston clam chowder, six fresh oysters, and a glass Coca Cola. That's not much. That is not for fifty five bucks. Yeah, like, that's like sure nothing. The rest of it. Yeah, that's like an appetizer. What the fuck? <laughs> hey, okay. Oh wait, but here we go. <laughs> for for a second menu for two for a hundred for sorry for seventeen thousand yen, mm -hmm. you get two clam chowders, twelve fresh fresh oysters, and a five hundred gram sirloin steak and two glasses of Coca Cola. Whoa! Holy shit! Oh my god! All Not that even... for only one hundred seventy dollars? <laughs> <laughs> Not even two Thanks. steaks. One steak. It's just one steak <laughs> yeah. to share. Yeah, split the steak. <laughs> Literally. Um, pass. Yeah, no hard pass. But but both menus come with um sets of collaboration merchandise, which is just lit in acrylic phone stand and a yeah. clear. And clear file. Oh, that's like those, those like, um, yeah, I know what they mean. Okay, good. Cause it, I it, don't. It's just like that's, a poster, basically. Yeah, it's kind of looks like a poster, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. But, oh, wait, but there's more. <laughs> there's, um, there's two drinks. Um, one is like, one is non alcoholic, a catcher and a rye, the mm -hmm. virgin cocktail with bitter syrup, peaches, and nectar. Mm -hmm. And then there's another drink called In Another Country, which is an alcoholic cocktail with mango liqueur and blueberry syrup. And I'm guessing and... they're super expensive. They are by my standards. Mm -hmm. Especially considering one doesn't have alcohol in them. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, they're both at 12, um, 1,200 yen. Yeah, it's and... pretty expensive. And they come with badges. Like, I don't know. I, I mean, like those... it's kind of like what you'd expect from a drink, like in Manhattan, though. Like for us, exactly, it's not exactly. And this, yes, and we were. That's why I said if we're in the city. Mm -hmm. 
I would expect to pay thirteen dollars for like an alcoholic drink. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, whether we're at a bar or not. Um, but yeah, so uh, I don't know. Feels like a ripoff to me. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's but it's nice. but it's banana fish. I love the anime, so I thought I'd talk about it. Um, but yeah, I think I'm. I, I that's. I'm done with that. At least with that story for now. Tony, what do you I have? I also have a couple of stories, but I'll start with this one since it's smaller. Um, mm-hmm. Another series that I like is Toho Project. And oh. they're coming out with the... They already came out with their own gacha game. They came out with a couple of gacha games. But... Oh, they're not coming out with their own restaurant. <laughs> no, no. They have a gacha game called Toho Project Lost World, which uh, I think it, it actually came out earlier this year or last year. Mm. Um, but now it's getting a global release. Um, you yeah, know, the game launched for iOS and Android in Japan in April 30th, but now it's getting, uh, it was just announced on Thursday that the smartphone game is getting a global release in English and there are pre-registration available now. They haven't given a hard date, uh, on when it's going to actually be out, but my guess is probably end of the year or something like that. Which I think is cool. I played a little bit of it. Um, it was pretty fun. It didn't really feel so fleshed out, which I guess is what you would expect from a new launch game. Mm. But I might, I might check it out on the channel or something here and there. I do love Toho, and the art is amazing. The music is amazing. It had really good production value. I'm not so sold mm. on the gameplay, though. Mm. So we'll see. Just keep an eye we out for that. See. We shall see. Indeed. And back to me... More gay stuff. Voice actor Eshin Fudemura comes out as gay. Yay! Yay. Um, yeah, basically posts like this very recently long uh, coming out post um, in a Twitter post. Um, and in addition, he will be joining the gay idol unit Nichome Sagikake, you know, coming out. Which I did not know existed because it's really, really small. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I. So, yeah. Um, for those who don't know, he doesn't have that many roles. He's uh, he's done stuff in Nanbaka, uh, Tsuki ga Kire, and Show by Rock. Oh, I like Show by Rock. Actually, oh, no. And so I like the first season of it. I didn't see anything else. No, okay. I figured you'd like that one. I just saw a bunch of lolis. Yep. Yeah. And I was <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. So, so, yeah. Super excited. Welcome. Welcome to the club. Welcome to the team. And, you know, keep on doing your thing. I wish him nothing but success in the, the future. So, you know, it just made me happy to see. Cool. Um, I do have one final piece of news on my end, which is the big, the big boy news. Mm-hmm. Um, Sony is nearing its acquisition of Crunchyroll, so Sony is going to could end up spending up to nine hundred and fifty-seven million dollars or a hundred billion yen to acquire uh, Crunchyroll. So, wait, how much was that again? Say it one more time for the people. Nine hundred and fifty-seven million dollars. God damn. Or one hundred billion yen. Um, and there's mi- there's mixed reactions on this, you know. Uh, Sony, for those of you who don't know, I they I believe they own Funimation as well, so they would have basically like everything, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they would like have like a, a stranglehold on anime, so a lot of people are angry because of that. Like, oh, they're gonna have a monopoly. Yeah, all. they're gonna have a monopoly on anime. Um, and I, I get it from that standpoint, like, that that would suck if Sony has a monopoly on anime. Um, a lot of people are also upset because uh, Sony has been very, very aggressive in its censorship laws or policy for video games. Recently on PlayStation, they basically don't allow any kind of etchy or lewdness in their video games anymore for some stupid-ass reason. Mm. Um, so they're afraid that this is going to extend into anime. 
I'm not so sure about that because as far as I know, Funimation still has some etchy shows in its lineup, and they haven't really done anything to like yeah censor I feel like it. That, I feel like that's a, I feel like that's a bit of a stretch, only because it's like those are two very different industries. Yeah, and it's not like they're run by the same department. I don't think, also, I don't think the head of PlayStation is going to call the exactly. shots. Exactly. Also, also, also money. <laughs> and also money. Yeah, I think there's a distinct difference between um, Western, like well, like gaming and anime in terms of the audiences like if you're if you're trying to be a gamer and you're like mainstream order you don't necessarily it's not that fan service isn't as much of a part of gaming as it is a much of a part of an anime you know yeah so you know it kind of those things go hand in hand for the most part so you know that's i don't know how i feel about this just yet um i'm leaning on the side of being cautious about it yeah but time will tell time will tell in Indeed. All right, that's all I had to say. All right, cool. Um, well then, let us guess. Let's just hop into the weekly reviews. Let us start our what it is. It, it, uh, Golden Kamui, I believe. Yes, yes. Golden Kamui, season three, episode four. Um, just once again, of it was it was a. Yes, did it have a fillerish feel to the episode? Yes, but was it mm-hmm. still funny? Absolutely. Yeah, it was pretty funny. I kind of, it felt really out of place though. I don't know how to feel about this episode. <laughs> like it had a lot of its funny moments, but yeah, it just felt weird. You know? Yeah, because it was like plot, 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 filler. <laughs> yeah, like this kind of episode went nowhere in terms of the grand scheme of things. I did like the setup of them joining the circus and then having all their little like little mini side arcs playing out. Um, what's his name with the uh, with the dancing girls was cute. Oh my god, Tanigaki. Yeah, Tanigaki. Oh my god, that was hilarious. <laughs> He is so funny. I got so bad how he just became like this very like side joke character. I feel like he's replaced um what's his face? Uh uh, uh Yes, thank you, Shiraishi. Yeah, yeah, he definitely has. Uh, but that was that was great. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the, the the aggressive coach woman who's like constantly like telling her like, "What you you're only good at playing with your dick? You want to sleep with me, huh? Huh? Yeah. You're gonna get you want to fuck me?" <laughs> she was she was amazing. Yo, that, yo, that bitch is cold. Yo, at the end when she pops them KGB ass motherfucker. She's a pop pop. Yep, no survivors. And then no even they were like, their eyes are wide open, like, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> they really weren't ready. Uh, we did get one good action scene as well with the, uh, yeah, the ending. Yeah, the end. Which was like, mm-hmm. also felt really random, but at least it was really awesome. That was actually one of the yeah, better exactly. action scenes. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, overall, I just, I, I liked the episode, but it felt kind of just weird in its yeah. placement in the in the series. Yeah, I feel like I feel like they're gonna go back to like. Oh well, yeah, they're definitely um, gonna go back to the uh, main yeah. stuff. They're like, ah, oh, we have an idea where they are. Let's head there. Mm-hmm. And oh, yeah, also the end. That almost that was that almost made this contender for episode of the week just from the end alone. Well, which part? No, like the like that end scene. Oh, where, with um, it was where like it was like, oh my god, I found poop, and then everyone comes up, <laughs> shoot, and she's like. See, but that's my poop. <laughs> <laughs> and then they're like, then the story ends with them all looking at Shiraishi's poop. Mm-hmm. Like, that's how we'll end this episode. That Later. is so stupid. This anime is yeah. I'm glad it never loses its identity as being just like, yeah, we're over the top and violent and we actually have a dramatic story and characters, but we can be silly here and there. Yeah. It talks about the dude's big nipples. He's like, oh, it's a huge <laughs> nipple. You got huge <laughs> Listen, leave the leave the man with his man titties and his giant nipples. Mm-hmm. Good episode mm-hmm. overall. Yeah, yeah, you convinced me. Good episode overall. Yeah, it was it was very it was the last episode I watched before recording this, so I'm like, yeah, it was mm-hmm. it was very enjoyable. <sighs> Alright, up next we have Don Machi, season three, episode five. Ooh, Don Machi. Um, so this episode is very much of oh my god. Super set up, super anticipation. Oh my god, stuff's happening. This was the opposite and of half the movie. <laughs> and half the cast is like, oh, Belkun, Belkun. 
Belkun. <laughs> yeah. Dot dot dot. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it was the opposite of, of Golden Kamui in the sense that it was just plot and nothing. Yeah. Like, I mean, Don Machi does this. They do their setup episodes every yeah. now and then. It's not. It's not. I didn't hate. I didn't hate the beginning it was because of the beginning was good. Um, yeah, the monsters fighting the humans. Yeah, and that agreed. Brutally yeah. slaughtered. Yeah, yeah. That spider. That spider queen. She a real one. Mm hmm. Rest in peace. Whoever your I'm name was. Kill myself before you guys. Can after me. yes, after I bet. Put my acid on my would be rapist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm a, I'm got on my own terms. <laughs> yeah, I kind of feel bad for the monster. I mean, it's kind of like this is my thing with Don Machi. Like, I it's super predictable, but I feel like it's executed well. Like, if the story had better writing, mm -hmm. I think this could literally be on par with like the better shonen type shows out there. You know. Yeah, like, I, I, I was gonna get crazy. Sorry, last that season, last but... season, after last season, I stood out, but this season is definitely already better. Yeah, well, yeah, it's it's better by virtue of the fact of having an actual plot line and not being super. Like I think last season was just it, there were certain points where the episodes just dragged on forever. I, and nothing listen, happened. I blocked it from my memory. Mm -hmm. I literally put it in a box that said "bad anime" and shipped it off somewhere in my brain. Um, I showed up for the first time this episode. Yeah, but of season. course it was to say something Stupid. not great. Yeah. Yep. Hey, I have this problem. What would you do if monsters could? I would kill them. I would kill yeah, every single yeah. one of them. They hurt people. I kill them. Yeah, simple I'm as like, that. Thanks, eyes. Yes, yes, eyes. You're right. You are simple. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, it ended with everyone screaming, "Belkan Dokoda." Yeah, it literally. Literally, that was it, and I'm just like, ugh, like no, no, <laughs> well not no, but just like uh, like I'm, I'm here's glad, where it's freaks of normalcy. I'm glad that well, I'm glad for two things. Uh, as someone clarified in our comment section uh, last week, which by the way, thank you for all the context. Um, that wasn't the harpy that died, and as we saw this episode, in by the evil dudes was not the same harpy that was speaking with Belkan in the group. No, so, it wasn't. Yeah, yeah. Even though they look identical. Cool for that. But I'm also happy because I I like that this setup is leading to, like, a giant conflict. And, like, they're all going to end up fighting each other. Because um, they're all headed to meet Belle. Uh, like, uh, what's her name was there? Aisha. And mm -hmm. um, the elf and everyone else. I feel like they're all just going to get on floor 18. And there's going to be a monsters versus team Belle versus asshole monster capturers. Three-way fight yeah. or something. Yeah, I'm just like if we can get to that point a lot sooner, I'd be yeah, that'd be great. I mean, we'll probably get there next episode. I don't think this hopefully can drag on. Huh? <laughs> so watch next week's filler episode, <laughs> right? <laughs> now we want to watch uh, Lily. Next... Let's watch Lily do laundry for the whole. <laughs> well, she says a bunch of bitchy things for no reason. <laughs> Why she talks about how much she hates monsters. <laughs> And the fuck monsters, and then I ice comes out of nowhere and joins her. Mm -hmm. I don't know why you hate them, but I will just murder can, them. Can we, if we ever got a filler episode that is Ice and Lily together, I think you would just implode. You I would just, just get, I would just, I would literally just do anything else. <laughs> I would have it on the screen playing while I like, I don't know. I, bills. I would have to carry the entire scheduling. section of I'd be, yep, I Listen, that's happened before where I just like, I refuse to watch that Oni, you got it. <laughs> like, like, eyes had yellow hair and Lily had ears and the sky was <laughs> blue. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, man. I hope next week is like. Yeah, I'm hoping next week is a big one. Yes. Until then, let's move on to Tony Kaku Kawaii episode. Five. Yes. Fuck engagement rings and wedding rings. Okay. Woo! So. So like. Grown women don't really care about this shit. Oh. And let me let me emphasize. <laughs> grown women <laughs> do not care about this shit. Grown. Grown as in what? The Gr five. Grown. Terms. Grown. Grown slash non. 
Women, women who oh, slash women who aren't super materialistic. I don't know. I feel like 90% of women, if I went up to them like, yo, here's a $300 ring I bought, they'd be like, throw this shit in the garbage, get me a diamond ring. No, you'd be, I feel like you'd be, you'd be wrong, unless you were a random stranger and gave them a, no, a like, ring. No, like, I, you, mm-hmm. you say that, but then there's literally an entire market built around exploiting the value of rings and weddings and making them super extravagant mm-hmm. and shit, so... Mm-hmm. I'd say the mm-hmm. economics disagrees with you on this. I mean, if she's, like I said, if she's not material, if she's like an everyday woman, mm-hmm. she knows that You're giving women too she's much not. <laughs> uh, what? You're giving women too much credit right now. <laughs> I, the five women listening to this, he's saying this, not me. <laughs> um, I'm just saying if you're with a woman who's like sensible and both of y'all are not rich, it doesn't make any sense that she's going, that she expects a thousands and thousands of dollars. Well, all right, let me clarify. Ring. I'm not saying that women would expect, like, you need to spend $50,000 on, wi- on a ring, but they would expect at least something nice. You can't just get them, like, a Cracker Barrel ring and be like, yeah, here, I spent okay, a couple that's, hundred that's... on this. <laughs> I think a couple. Of, I think a couple hundred. Mm-hmm. I think a couple of hundred. Is, I, I would I say. I would say hundred. between like, they would. Most women probably want something. I'd say in the range, depending on your income level, I'd say in the range of like, you know, two to two to five thousand. Uh, we'll say under three hundred. What under three hundred dollars? Yeah. What you would buy a ring? Yeah. Oh man, I don't. <laughs> these, these are really nice. I uh, don't tell the. I would say don't tell the woman you're marrying. <laughs> That's not your issue. I. I. All right. So when I get a girlfriend and I'm about to get engaged to her, I'm gonna buy her a three hundred dollar ring. Remember this conversation. I'm gonna buy her a three hundred dollar ring and present it to her, and we'll see what her reaction is. And then I'll buy I mean, a five thousand dollar ring and give it to her afterwards. I don't know. Some of, some of these rings, these are so cute. Some of, some yeah, of these rings are cute. The, like, yeah, you can get a nice looking ring for three hundred bucks, but it's still a three hundred buck ring. <laughs> so, I would. I still understand. What, like, if it looks nice, I don't think she'll she'll care that much. Mm, you know, got like, chat she, <laughs> in the comments. She, let us she, know. <laughs> is she going? Is she going to pick up the ring and be like, take out her little monocle? Be like, hmm, what? Not even two carrots. No, no, little, but they'll know it. Like, obviously, they'll like they'll ask the price. So they'll have an idea of how much you paid why for they it. They ask the price. I, don't know, I just feel like they would have an idea of what you paid for the ring. Like how? Right. Like literally, unless she's a jeweler, that doesn't make any sense. All right, all right, Drew. You, you, uh, listen. For those of you who are watching, let us know in the comments if you what your <laughs> position on how drew would have a, a ring a ring and a wedding for like on a budget of 500 bucks or something okay I, whoa i didn't say i whoa, whoa, whoa. i said <laughs> i said the ring i didn't say nothing about <laughs> mm. mm-hmm. oh see okay. I, yeah if it was up to me and we were all being sensible yeah the ring would be 300 bucks and there wouldn't be a wedding we would just get the thing signed and be out we just, you, Sukasa's okay, my number one waifu okay, this is the you, woman you I want to marry far. you just went too far it's fucking, that, a wedding a ceremony means nothing and it's way too expensive just get married if you're getting married uh, or do like a small house party do like a small house party or something you don't need to have you spend like 80 grand okay I don't think I need a Kate or um I don't need a caterer per se for a wedding, but I want it to be nice. I want, yes, I want the whole, oh, the whole. Arch- you want to rent out a venue and everything? Uh, I don't. I mean, I would definitely ask like a friend had like the lawn for it. I'd be like, mm. hey, friend, <laughs> hey, do you want to? You know, mm-hmm. or or I could actually just rent out a place small. It would like, and I it wouldn't be like, oh, or here's a reception area. Here's this normal. Well, actually, there are places like that, like like in the Bronx, there are places like that that aren't like, you know, super lavish, mm-hmm. crazy big. Yeah, yeah. There's a few places. There are two places. I would probably do something like that because it's like you know, affordable. This is it's like <laughs> it's not even dep- it's not depressing to me. Like I mean, just thinking about how much money this is costing is depressing. <laughs> 
Uh, I mean, l listen, for me to have the writing done right, I will be like, well, we're engaged for, we're going to be engaged for like two, three years till we save. Dot, mm. dot, dot. Uh, that's just me. But getting back to the episode. Yeah, let's talk about the episode itself. <laughs> so we find out something that I find actually pretty, it was funny. It was like funny, yet a little triggering. Mm -hmm. I know that uh, Tsukasa, you know, despite her, you know, she has a little bit more personality. She's no longer just wife. Like, yeah, they she's gave her also, backstory. Gave her hobbies. Yeah, she's yeah, she's like I'm a giant movie buff. Mm, I appreciate the little random movie references, especially uh, Human Centipede. Uh, yeah, I was like, God, oh, so yeah, they just mm -hmm. gave a giant pop culture movie flood. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, ugh, because it made me go, oh, hello, because my ex is also a movie buff. So I was like, yeah. <laughs> but. Yeah, and she 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 around it. Her my her reaction, her interactions with him when talking about movies was very similar to me and my exes. She'd be like, "Oh my god, this movie da 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 da," and I'd be like, "Oh okay." Yeah, I remember cool. you also hadn't seen Star Wars. That is true, and I watched all of it leading up to the ninth movie, which sucked ass. So it's like da da da. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, God, I can't believe I went... Not only did I watch that crappy movie, I watched that crappy movie at 2 in the morning. Yikes. I would have been pissed. I, I was too sleepy to be mad. <laughs> I was just sleepy. <laughs> but yeah, um... So that was very cool. I like that they gave something about her, even though... And then she was like, I want a TV. And then... I don't know, I liked her because she was like, I want a TV. Mm -hmm. And then he was just like, huh. In a really weird twist, he became the. It was quickly revealed to us that, episode that he's the materialistic one. Yeah. And she's the one who's just very chill. She's like, Duh, should we get this one? What kind of it has? She's like, we can just get the cheapest option. And she kept repeating that. Mm -hmm. And then definitely the same for like the rings. I like your like, strategy for the rings. Like, let me just take him to the most expensive place and that will fix it. He'll, he'll see how expensive these are. And he almost yeah. falls for it. <laughs> Yeah, and she was like, nope, we're leaving. <laughs> and then he goes to the cheap place. He's like, well, it's only 6,800 yet. And then she's like, that's still expensive. <laughs> I'm like, still you, that's still money. thousands of dollars. <laughs> yeah. Mm, yeah, poor, poor thing. And then, you know, she's like, let's just get the cheapest rings. Like, this is, is this fine? It was like, it was really weird because he kept trying to like superimpose that like she really was into all this stuff. Mm hmm. And like I said, this goes goes back to what I'm saying when I said grown woman, grown slash mature woman. <laughs> I think that's a smaller okay. part of the population than you think it is. Like I said, I don't think most women would want you to get like the, oh, yes, we need the $700,000 diamond ring. But I, I think they would want at least like the rule of thumb of saving two to three paychecks or whatever for a ring. Do they know, like, do, are they going to look at your paycheck? Like I said, are they going to look at I your mean, paycheck? I mean, Drew, I mean, Drew, I mean, ring. If, you're, if you're in that close of a relationship with somebody, I think you have an idea of how much money is in their bank account. If they just buy a ring and it's, like, a cheap ring and you notice that there's no, like, difference in their spending habits versus if they bought a ring and it's, like, ten, like five grand and you should be like, all right, by the way, we're not eating out for, like, another four months and Girl, we're living off of all. crackers. <laughs> First, okay, so number one, I would never even want that second. Like, I want four months of awesome food over a ring. I feel like mm. most women like being taken Andrew, out. Andrew, you are the perfect. Meals. You are the perfect wife. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you're not giving women their 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 credit. I think <laughs> at least up to this point, like Fair, fine. I will I will embrace that this this newfound. Maybe I am being overly stereotypical. I think so. I think so. I'm not saying there aren't women who, like I said, I'm not saying there aren't women who are materialistic like this. And like, I want a big fucking wedding ring. Ah. But for the most part, I think the majority of people, especially if they know that, like, especially if they know that you, you aren't, like, rich enough to be buying hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars in terms of rings, mm -hmm. they're just going to be like, oh, the ring looks nice. I like that it looks nice. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Also, I think, yeah, no one should spend more than 500 on an engagement ring. 
honestly. That is I only say that because I, I looked I looked at the rings under 500. I'm like, oh, some of these do look actually cute. Also, keep in mind, diamonds are artificially inflated in price. They're the, one of the most common gems you can find on the earth. So it's all capitalism. Exactly. And Girl, it's not, it's not that important. You're getting the wedding ring anyways. Like, if I spent a lot of money on the engagement ring, I would spend, like, a hundred bucks tops. Oh, yeah, that's the other thing I learned from this episode. I didn't know that. You don't even wear that engagement ring all that exactly, much. Exactly, you don't. You just wear it. You just I'm like, wear oh, it. yeah, that makes sense. Which is why I'm like... I mean, I get it. One woman likes to stunt and be like... Mm -hmm. Like, it's like it's like a power, it's a power play, like, showing off a good engagement ring. But mm -hmm. you're only wearing it for, like, a year or so, and then never again. And then you just have a wedding ring. Yeah. Which no one gives a fuck about. <laughs> Which is just basic. basic yeah. <laughs> for, the, for, the, for the most part. Yeah. So yeah, that's just how <laughs> he says that is how I feel about the ring situation. Um, I like that. <laughs> I like the one point where he kisses her in the park. Oh, that was so cute. That was so cute. And then it just you just see the maid spying on them. Mm -hmm. And they're like, Wow, I can't believe that just happened. Whoa. And then she's like, and then Tsukasa's like, hey, well, that would have been really embarrassing if that happened. And then the other maid, they said, they looked at each other like, yeah, we saw that. That was actually embarrassing. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. This, this show is going to make me very uh, envious of relationships. And I'm going to get in a relationship and I'm going to be like, it's not as good as it was in the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, n guys, don't hop into a relationship looking for a Tsukasa. Yeah. I mean, but Tsukasa adjacent, but not Tsukasa. Tsukasa doesn't gonna be... exist. Settle she... for what you have. She doesn't. There's no superhuman <laughs> woman who comes from a super rich family. I, that does not exist right now, so do what you will with that. Fair enough. Life is suffering. Mm hmm. Speaking of, well, the maybe, maybe the opposite of suffering. Mm. Up next, we have Kamisama Ninata He episode four, which is my episode of the week. Oh, same. Wait, it's split. It's actually split. You're the split. This, this is this yeah. is my episode of the week. This is my episode of the week. Um, yeah, this this whole episode is so fucking stupid. <laughs> It this... was obscenely funny. It, it, was, it was so absurd. I was like, what the hell is going on? It was hilarious for multiple reasons that were like, for one, it was hilarious because no one understands how you play Mahjong. And I feel like they were just riffing on it. Like, yeah, Mahjong <laughs> makes no fucking sense. And it's just people yelling up names. And yeah. Me. So yeah. that was great. <laughs> like, I remember um... watching Saki and trying to figure out how to play Mahjong and being like, this game makes no sense. <laughs> People are just doing anything they want. <laughs> oh my god. Uh and it's like every time like she he thought of like advice of Odin's advice, she'd do something like very like oh like mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's like she has constant little poses and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> that <laughs> and I like completely lost it at the Uno stuff. Like Whatever works in Uno, you could just do it. <laughs> you know, skip. Uh, like, oh shit. What skip, 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 skip. Skip, 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 skip. <laughs> this was so stupid. <laughs> uh. Yeah, this is the crazy, insane comedy that I needed. <laughs> yes, indeed. Also, the ending with the... Uh, the actress or, or whatever she was, the model. And she's, uh, the, you mean the lawyer? The, was she a lawyer? Yeah, she was a lawyer. <laughs> whatever the cougar that she is. <laughs> yeah, oh God. I was like, oh, this is uncomfortable. This is uncomfortable. <laughs> At first, I was like, all right, maybe I'm just, my lewd mind is reading too much into this. And then she just like started rubbing up on his leg and being like, I want to see yeah. your infinite reachy stick. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> And then he rejected her. And then she got mad. She was like, <laughs> she was like, wait, you are doing this one in a time, one in a lifetime thing. Mm -hmm. and he's like, yes, I have someone I love. And she's like, security, fuck him up. Kill him. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that was crazy. 
Yeah, that was actually that was, this was fucking hilarious. I I thoroughly enjoyed the nonsense that this episode was. Oh my god! Oh, that the embarrassing promo vid that they that he did before the match started. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, it, it makes me sad that this is going to turn into a drama at some point because if it was just a pure comedy, I think it, it could possibly yeah. be the funniest thing we're watching all season. Oh yeah, absolutely. This is yeah, this is like the funniest thing I'm I've been watching like as a whole. This is ah, uh, this is so solid. It's so funny. I love this. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm really enjoying this that. anime. So glad mm-hmm. me that. too. Yes, 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 yes. In- indeed. All right, let us move on to Higarashi no Naku Koro ni Go, episode five. Oof, we got the reset. Yep, I mean, the reset started with a few minor changes from the original. Yes, the main one was that um, uh, Keiichi gives the doll to Mion. Mm-hmm. I think in the original he basically made hey Keiichi was a dick in the original he basically I think he just made fun of her for being a tomboy oh yeah and no, made the doll to Reina or something yeah yeah in this one in this remake Chiana is more she's definitely more somewhat more um, feminine yeah more feminine like before she actually was like you know mm-hmm. Mian, Mian was definitely more like uh tomboy yeah she was more tomboy and she you know whenever he said stuff about you know Xion, of uh, neon would be like oh my she in the original she'd be like oh uh, ha, 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 ha. Uh, you're so stupid huh whatever gotta go like and and like you know left it at that and this one she was more like oh you're talking about me oh mm-hmm. They they actually made her a lot cuter, which goes to my theory for this episode, which is pretty sure it was just me on the entire time and not Chian. Girl, I don't know. <laughs> like part of me is like, is it Chian or is it but like it was too much where it was just like like for example, like you said, when me every time he's saying because there are parts where Keiichi was just like, oh yeah, Shion is so much better than you, Mion. And then Mion is still like, oh, is she really? Oh, I'm so blushing. I'm like, you wouldn't blush if he was talking shit about you and talking great about your sister like that. And also... No, he said she was talking great about Shion. Yeah, that's what I said. He was, oh. but, but no, he was talking great about Shion to Mion. Oh. And like ragging on her like, oh, you don't have a... Your smile is not as good as your sister's smile, or whatever. Oh, but that, but I thought she was being all like, oh, she was taking a compliment because that is Xion. Oh, so you thought it was Xion the entire time? I thought it was me on the entire time. Well, not the entire time, but I think it was Xion when he made that compliment. Because why would you get on um, that? Plus yeah, yeah that's what I'm saying. I'm thinking it was me on then because it was also me on in the restaurant. <laughs> so we're basically split on when we. I think we could come to a conclusion that at certain points they switched places. I just don't know yeah. when. And I and I just think one of the, one of the points is when he's talking about Xion because if he's saying if she's under the guise of Mion and mm-hmm. someone says something nice about her, like she's gonna get embarrassed mm-hmm. because she that they're talking about her. Yeah, they're talking about her. So like, do you understand? Like, you yeah, understand I understand what, what you're saying, from? but what I'm saying is I think it was Mion the entire episode pretending okay. to be Xion. Because when she still, when she saw Keiichi in the restaurant, she was still friendly with him and, like, talked like she knew him. Like, all right, Keiichi, what are you doing here? So. That is. And then when he kept bothering her, he was like, actually, uh, I'm Shion. So. So I don't Mm. know. It it just, maybe, I think, and maybe I'm thinking too much now, but. Hmm. It is. But then this is the part that, this is the fun that's. The the part that is fun. Um, yeah, the theorizing and figuring yes. things out. So I'm so glad that they made this remake with little differences like this because mm-hmm. now it feels like a fresh experience. Yeah. Uh, also, shout out to those kids who are in love with Satoko and uh, Rika for giving <laughs> us the fan service. <laughs> that was so stupid. <laughs> good taste. Good taste. Good taste. Um, I also like that. Uh, what you call it? Uh. I like that little interesting conversation with uh, Keiichi and Rena. Mm-hmm. That did not 
exist or did not go down go down quite the same in, from the original. I probably said in the original. I feel like the the overall writing is just better in this one. Like the character interactions and stuff feel better. Um, mm-hmm. Also, it's gonna be very hard. I've noticed for the past two episodes of the podcast that I've been using the thumbnail um, with Reina, with Reina's face. Yeah, and I'm like, this episode she also made a crazy face. That's so gonna be really difficult to not use as a thumbnail. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm like, yeah. is this rest of the season just gonna have thumbnails of Reina's face? That wasn't even like a crazy face. That just camera angle was like. Yeah, it was just a weird camera angle. <laughs> like, but it's perfect for a thumbnail. <laughs> Yeah, um, I don't know. I'm I'm excited to see how the rest of it's gonna go down. Yeah. Oh, I I was I was saying. So at the end of the scene, um, when the, when Shion, mm. you know, gathers up the town folk to scare away the bikers, I was say like, I thought I found it funny in the original that like it got to the point where even the kids were like pulling up. Yeah. I was like, I think I would have liked that if they added that too in the remake. Just add that little bit of, oh, what the fuck. Mm-hmm. No, I think that would have been a little, give a little bit more impact, but, you know, it's it's fine. It's, it's, it's just a little thing. Yeah, I'm sure it'll... Actually, in the original, this arc was kind of probably the weakest, in my opinion. Uh, so it'd be uh, interesting to see how it changes. Because it's the one I remember the least. Yeah, I agree. Um... Hopefully it, it gets a little bit spicier this time around. Yeah, well, they're definitely in a different direction. Mm-hmm. Oh, also, that doll can just, nope. Yeah, return. fuck that doll. I'm like, you know what's better? Getting nothing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Stupid little Annabelle doll. Mm-hmm. Indeed. All right. So let's move on to Strike Witches Road to Berlin, episode four. My other episode of the week. That's I'm surprising. sorry. It is. I'm just sorry. I I am. I'm weak to like cute lesbian shit. I'm. Yes. I really am. <laughs> that was yes. that was so wholesome. They are like my favorite my, little couple. Too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They're like my favorite characters, and it's gonna make me sad because I feel like they're not gonna get their own episode again. No. Nope. Like, <laughs> yeah, and I will repeat that never cared about this anime ever. <laughs> and they were so cute, and they had their little lesbian fat mm-hmm. and then they're like no why do you do this and they run away and they're not talking to each mm-hmm. other like they're literally just like a lesbian couple <laughs> and I, I love it so much and at the end where homegirl crashes her bike just to save um zucchini, um, zucchini. she's like you're more important than any old bike i was like oh <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that hit me in the heart. And then when he shows the bike and she went over 200 miles per hour or whatever, I'm like, oh, yeah, so cute. And she did it for the woman she loves. Mm. Oh. Yeah, yeah, they're they're definitely the 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 cutest little couple uh, out of all the uh, pairings. Yeah, I do. I I can't. I mean, I don't know. I guess maybe I like this show. If if every couple is just like if they're all just lesbians. They are to they are to varying degrees. Like the, oh, the okay. these two have like the cuter interactions where they're just like always around each other and spatting with each other a bit. The other ones have mm. some more like Sundre esque. Like I like you, but I don't really like you. No, I'm not gonna be. I'm not gonna say I liked it because it filled my heart up with joy. If mm-hmm. it can't give me that, I don't want it. I don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> I want pure happiness and joy. Exactly. Um, yeah, it's gonna do this thing where it's gonna shift around to all the different little couples, I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, They're all gonna have their own kind of episode. Yeah, mm-hmm. which I don't mind. Right. I'm glad because it gets you the chance to see all the characters or whatever. Yes, yeah. yeah, come through lesbian ranking chart, lesbian mm-hmm. couple we'll ranking have a chart, lesbian power ranking chart. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, other than that, this episode was just a little cute, from bringing yeah. back the um, Charlotte and Bikini dynamic. So yeah, that's all I got to say about it. I don't know. It's so funny. The, the episodes I like the most, I have the least to say. Mm-hmm. It was also a oh, simplistic the... episode. So. Yeah, it was very one plus one. This was not two. the this was not the Hirashi writing that level of yeah, that. Not not at all. But good episode nonetheless. Yes. But that being said, let's move on to our final anime of the night. 
or the podcast. We always record at night. That's why I always say that. Mm-hmm. Um, Fire Force, season two, episode 17, 18, 19, 18. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I haven't fucked up the number in a very long time, okay? And I quickly corrected myself. Yeah, that's fine. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> oh, that's why I thought it was 17. This is like the wrong wrong note. <laughs> now you're about to start talking about the wrong episode. I'm like, wait, what? Exactly. <laughs> I don't remember that. <laughs> um... I found this to be honest. I found this episode boring for the first fifteen minutes, <laughs> and then the and then that. the Tamaki part happened. I'm like, oh thank God, this episode is saved. <laughs> <laughs> I knew this was gonna happen. Like, I feel bad because like I know Iris is important and like her struggle is important, and I like her as a character. But it was just so boring to watch her go through like through the monastery and her like. Okay, <laughs> so I honestly think. I don't think it was that boring, but it wasn't I think it dragged boring. on. It dragged on a little. Too, like yeah. if they split it up half and half, it was boring for compared to the rest of this season for this show. You know what I mean? Like that usually is... shit is happening, or like they're always. That's fair, but things. I feel like it's an important. I feel like it was a part that just had to be tackled. Yeah, so that's why I'm not giving it too much. Like I'm not being too harsh. I'm like because they have to do this. I'm like, all right, all right, you have to do this type of thing. But then I loved it because they're like, I feel like they were aware, like, listen, we know this is not the most exciting part of the show, so here we go. Here's a little five-minute thing at the end of this episode with Tamaki and this other dude, and you're yeah. going to watch them flip the fuck. It was, like, super funny, though. Yeah. Honestly, I think what they could have done to make it better is, like, made the fight with, like, the Inferno Priest. Uh, longer? Like, just longer. longer. Yeah, longer. Yeah. yeah. Both. Think yeah, that would have that would've, it that out. Would've been a lot better. And then maybe like as they're fighting, there's like you know a monologue is happening, or they're fighting and stuff where mm-hmm. she's like reflective on what she's doing, blah 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 blah, something yeah. like that. Would have kept people's attention long enough. I feel like. Mm-hmm. I agree with that. Um. Oh. Hmm. Mm, what else I want to say about Iris? She did have her little moments here and there where she was adorable, like when she was like trying to flex on on Shinra. I was like, "Look, oh, I, yeah. I need to muscle up," and she like show off her arm or whatever. That was cute. That was cute. Like I like her as a character. I don't have any issue with her as a character. I just find her scenario like not the most appealing. That is, that is fair. Um, <laughs> the second half was uh. It was just, yeah. I didn't, just, his power. <laughs> to my, to my power. He's gone through all this training. I've watched so much porn. I'm ready now. <laughs> yeah. Like, it just goes to show how, how beautiful Tamaki is. No no porn or, or prostitute can compare to Tamaki's dream. I like that I he, he went to the, the mm-hmm. club. Yeah, he actually went to the host club. I was mm-hmm. like, what? Nothing can prepare you for the Tamaki. Uh, they really did go above and beyond with the. I'm glad they they were like listen. We have this much budget, and they, I swear to God, they were like, all right, just how much budget we have for the entire season, guys. And we're like, all right, take seventy five percent of that, and we're gonna earmark it for all the Tamaki lewd scenes, and it's gonna be super animated and yep. well, super detailed and everything. Yeah, even when the guys like even the guy mm-hmm. the slaughter, I think he was doing was like very well animated. Like when he wrote that thing, like. I don't know. I'm going or something. Yeah, yeah, that fire. Super, like, yeah. Mm-hmm. I was like, that's super stylish and pretty. Mm-hmm. Or like his yeah. facial expressions and everything when he's like, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, so at the end, mm-hmm. like <laughs> that face he made was like, oh my god, that was like a, that was a Hegarashi slash Code Geass face. Also, it ended with them like about to fight each other. Does that mean t- next week is going to open with them fighting each other or are we just going to ignore that whole plot line now no no it's it's they're not going to be fighting each other next episode like they're he, mm. it's implied that he's going to like lose to her because he says i would just keep at the end because he's like i like her like i'm like Aw. yeah i'm kind of i'm kind of shipping them now yeah that is cute for her i feel like she's just getting accosted though <laughs> yeah it's not like, the best situation for tamaki but i feel like like if they continue this little thing and then she like grows feelings for him or whatever i feel like that's cute Fire Force really, they, they they really are just 
kings and or queens of like making very weird uncomfortable like pairings like, yeah, <laughs> yeah like, this is the second God. one this is the second <laughs> one like i that made me feel uncomfortable like what the fuck <laughs> Oh man, yeah, maybe it, it could only go. Let's see how much worse they get with it. Uh, let's not. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so that was basically Fire Force. And now, mm. time for well, I wouldn't say for my favorite part. I like all the parts. Mm. Just, I guess another part, the last segment of well, our. You're, you're definitely looking forward podcast. to this talk. Um, so guys, I gave you a little bit, you know, I gave you guys a little bit of teaser, being like, hmm, so how far is far when it comes to what you will tolerate from the creator when it comes to watching anime? And that's because I wanted to address the rumors of Hajime Isayama, who is also known as the creator of Attack on Titan. Um, allegedly... I'm gonna be using that word a lot, allegedly and hypothetically. <laughs> Don't sue us. Allegedly, mm. he's uh, been ex- he's you know portrayed some imperialist, pro Japan, potentially some anti semitist views on his on his alleged private account. Um, at first, I was getting ready to like really talk about it and just really lay into him, but I, the more I kept reading the less proof I could find of it actually being his, you know, his private account. So that's why I'm using the word alleged. That's why I'm being, I'm going to be using hypothetical a lot because I don't know, because we don't know. There's nothing substantial, so I can't say it's fact. Same. From what I've looked into it, I, like, yeah, there's a lot of claims, but there's, yes, there's a lot nothing of claims, like, here's a lot of proof positions. of what he yep. said and did this or whatever. Yeah. So it is. It is word of mouth. Yes. So in a hypothetical, mm-hmm. hypothetical, where Isayama did believe all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So how would we feel about it? Um. So from my perspective on how the stories, well, for. I think there's two hypotheticals we can look at here because if we're saying he believed all that stuff and uh, all that, you know, imperialistic stuff and then we applied that to Attack on Titan because I do think Attack on Titan does deal with, like, fascism because it's, like, a lot of very obvious allegories yeah. for, like, fascism in yeah. Attack on Titan. But I do think yeah. from the way it's portrayed, it is portrayed from, like, the perspective that, the, hey, the fascists are bad. And yeah, the the Eldians, which are the I guess the allegory for the Jewish people, are like the main protagonists. Like, uh, um, I forgot his name already, Aaron. So, I don't see it as it being anti-Jewish or anything yeah. like that. I, I think, think they're just playing like a whole of yeah, fascism. yeah. Um, that that's where I'm kind of going with it. Um. Excuse me, but my question was still like, mm. but yeah, I was gonna say if he did believe all that stuff, um, personally, it I it wouldn't bother me too much because I don't see it reflected because you don't see work. it in yeah. the yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, there were claims that uh, oh shit, where was that? Where that one note? I had the notes, I had the notes, and I lost the notes. No, I think based on um Don Pixis was compared to was being compa- or modeled after um a very famous commander in the imperialist time. Mm-hmm. I wish I can find I don't know why I lost it. I had that note. I think I exited it out. Uh my bad y'all. Um allegedly you had that note. Alle- yeah exactly allegedly. <laughs> now I don't <laughs> all alleged. Um Oh, excuse deeper. me. But yeah. Um, but yeah. So, I don't know. For me, I personally would have to struggle. I would struggle with the concept of watching this anime again. Because mm. it's like, 
it's like, bruh, like, liking the Diving Imperialist era, like, that era specifically, mm. that, they did some bad, like, they, they were, they were Nazis light, like, very much so. That is like, true. They did some really bad, they did some really, really bad things. I'm like, I feel like it comes to that point where I'm just like, I can't, I, I feel like I wouldn't be able to, like, watch it and just, like, not think about it. Because, like you said, it is very, um, it is very, uh, facet. Like, it does have some, some fascist some themes. Ah, here we go. I found it. Um, <clears throat> so, apparently, he modeled, he apparently modeled him, I, I love maybe allegedly. Mm-hmm. Oh no, nope, he admitted that was the case. So he admitted that Doc's Doc Pixis was based on said military leader, uh Yoshifuru Akiyama, mm-hmm. who was a general in the Imperial Japanese Army. So See, you but know. even that is vague. Because I like I like I am trying to put this like to a more I, no, American uh, perspective. I, I, I know, that's like that's almost kind of like we're ju- we're getting to a hop, skip, and a jump territory. Yeah, because I'm like I'm putting it through a lens of America, so the only way I can compare it is like with the Civil War and the Confederacy, because obviously we still have Confederate apologists in this country. So I'm trying to think of like, all right, we do have people who model like characters and generals and stuff in America after like Robert E. Lee or Stonewall Jackson, who were Confederate generals and did really shitty, horrible things. So I kind of get it from that perspective, and they don't necessarily endorse the Confederacy. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, yeah, like if there was like a dude who did like a, I don't know, an <laughs> like an anime that was based on the Confederacy winning the war and like being assholes and apolog, like I don't know, it's and racist, yeah, yeah, then yeah, I can see that as being like um, something I wouldn't want to support. But I would, I would need yeah. to be like it would need to be a very clear and obvious thing for me. Like, yeah, there's a oh, sorry about that. And my alarm. Take my med. Take my medicine, which I'll do after. Um. But yeah, it was. But yeah, I know. I I still. It's like, mm, just like. Specifically, I'm saying, yeah, like, if it was connected, because it's just like, because mm-hmm. he, he wasn't just like, it wasn't just like, oh, mm, you know, I kind of just like the imperialists or for whatever. It was like, eh, it wasn't that bad. Like, <laughs> it was I. Right. <laughs> whatever. I'm like, dude. It, I'm like, dude, like, there are multiple atrocities. Like, it, like, so many people, like, between like the countries of Korean and Japan, and Japan, Korea and China mm-hmm. were like massacred, tortured, raped, forced into slave labor, etc., and so on and so forth. So it's like it's a really huge deal. Mm-hmm. And seeing how that's, I think how you know my history as a black man has a lot to do with that. I <laughs> I would feel like it's like oh I don't know how I could could you know just watch just like i said watch an anime which shows you know parallels of those themes even if he's writing on the right side of history but also also that would like you said that it would sort of feel weird or wouldn't make so much sense because like you said eden is a descendant of the giants mm-hmm. yeah and he's a good guy so dot 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 yeah, and I think that's the main thing, like, because of the way that the story's framed, it doesn't really make it look like mm-hmm. it's that bad from that yeah. angle. But yeah, we should always keep in mind, uh, you know, who the, yeah. the authors are, the creators are, and what their intentions are. Yes, the, the reason why I still stuck to this story after figuring it out, because I think it was, I just want to demonstrate the importance of, like, looking the shit up <laughs> before yes. speaking the on it. The importance of research. <laughs> yes, because I was really about to, I was about to just go into this without reading too much and embarrass us both. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but then I stopped 
I said, you know, let me just read a little bit. Let me just read and make sure, you know, that everything is, all oh, the the dot, the eyes are dotted, T's mm-hmm. across, and so forth. And I was like, oh, well, shit, I was about to be very incorrect. That is very important because I think a lot of people overreact to like things, mm-hmm. especially nowadays because of Twitter and all that stuff. So like yeah. a story will happen, and then somebody exaggerates it, and somebody else exaggerates it, and somebody else exaggerates it, and then you get like this super exaggerated story, and then. Yeah. If you actually take five minutes to look into it, you'll just be like, oh, wait a second. The original thing wasn't really that clear to begin with. Or there's mm-hmm. more to it than this. So, exactly. Do your research, people. Yes, do your research. Um, I would say, though, like, if that came out, if I was wrong, mm-hmm. if for some reason I was wrong, and they're like, yes, this is, uh, I don't, yeah, imperialism wasn't too bad of a thing. I really don't. I feel like Oni and I would have to talk about the future of that show on our on our podcast in the future because I just oh, yeah. I just I just, I'm just like that that would just make me uncomfortable like I'm just, like I said I I can't I can't unhear it once I'm watching an anime all about fascism mm-hmm. also Oni would would there be like you know because well not just to segue just a little bit would there be any other like general things like if the author did this. Um, like, I guess we can use like J.K. Rowling as an example again. Like, yeah, if if Harry Potter came out with an anime right now, I'd probably be like, let's not stream, let's not cover that one. <laughs> you please, know? even if she wasn't a turf, I still wouldn't. <laughs> um, you know, what about? Uh, hmm. I'm trying to say, I'm trying to think of something that's not going to be like, ha, ah, I'm talking about this person. Mm. I'm not, it's not so much talking about talking about like people. I don't want to bring up like examples of people per se. I just want to be you know, examples of like situations. Mm. Um, what about like a murderer? Oh, yeah. Well, mm. it mm. depends. Okay. It depends. What, what, if, what if he like, you know, what if he like, What if he like actually Watch his like kill count? <laughs> no, I mean actually kill. So no, it's funny because there's a story similar to this I read somewhere mm-hmm. where someone admitted like, yeah, so I kind of killed someone. Da da da. Like I forget the context of it. Like it was mm-hmm. such a random story that I was just like, huh? But then it was like I think it was like through Twitter and I just kept scrolling. That's why I thought of it. But what if someone was like, yeah, I, yeah, I killed this person, and it was like. And it was like a stupid reason, like, like it wasn't like self defense. Like they were just like murderers and like, like a like like manslaughter, like a manslaughter um, charge. And is the story that they're writing related to the murder in any way? Like, is it like an O.J. Simpson thing where allegedly he killed somebody and then he wrote a book about it? <laughs> no, he. We'll say that we'll say we'll say it's not. Let's say there is like. Murder, like, mur- like there is killings in his book. Like mm-hmm. people do die. I mean, I feel uncomfortable about it. I think just a bit, <laughs> just a bit, you know, just a bit, just a bit. Because then I would just be constantly thinking, like, ooh, is this how he killed this person? <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. I for me, I, I will admit, I'm very quote unquote SJW mm. about what I will and will not watch from someone. It's like. Yeah, if you if you super hate women, no. If you hate minorities, no. I think like, for me, it's more about like the work. Like it's a two part thing. Like who is this I person, know. and mm-hmm. how is their work like reflecting? Like I think you can be a shitty person and still do some work that's like, oh, this is a really yeah, cool so, book yeah. So you're right, Jay. Like I'm going about Jay Rowling. Mm. Great story writing, excellent stuff. Won't get a penny from me ever again, but. I don't know. It's like it. It was that interesting line of like, hmm, how how far would you mm-hmm. go to support someone who's done X, Y, and you know, yeah. X, Y, and Z? You know, just I don't know. Just being around a lot of different people, it's made me a lot. It made me more self conscious. <laughs> like things like I things I'm things I feel like I would have tolerated or been a little bit like hmm ago. Mm-hmm. I'm not so much, um, 
It, I, I find, even though I say that, it's it's almost like a weird juxtaposition because before I used to be very re. I'm not, and Oni can personally attest to this. I can. Yes, he can. <laughs> but there's other things I'm also just like, oh, I picked up on that. Da yeah. da da. Let's let's not. Um, case in point. Um, you know, I'm definitely more. Uh, let's say sensitive to people who like make like jokes about like Asian people. I'm just like even even like those mic you know those microaggressions. I'm like, mm, especially because now like you know we built this community and a lot of them are Asian people. So it's just like and it, it was ironic because I think this is like the week before when they were when you know people in the chat who were Chinese they were like telling me how to pronounce some people's names. Mm -hmm. And then the week after, I'm watching this movie. It was a really awesome, like, animated movie. I think that was like it was like a Chinese animated animated production team like mm -hmm. made this movie. Super awesome. And then someone like, they're like, ha ha ha, we don't know what it says. And then he starts doing like that whole like thing where he even make fun of like not knowing how to say the word. So they're like, they start saying like Ching Chong and like all that stuff. And I was like, yeah, I was like, ah. I was like, eh, yeah, let's not. Like, <laughs> I said it very loudly because I'm just like, oh, like, yeah. I mean, that's but... part of being around more people. You get like different views and, and become more sensitive to those types of things. Like, it's a lot easier to accept when Chinese people are being made fun of if you don't know any Chinese people or like mm -hmm. relate to any Chinese people or anything like that. So exactly. Yeah, like, yeah, definitely, like, before, it would have been made me, like, feel away, but I wouldn't have said anything, but then a few weeks ago, I was like, no, <laughs> let's not. That is part of our growth as humans. Exactly. So, and I, I think discussing the nuances of situations like these is very healthy, like, as opposed to just being like, well, you, no, 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 of like being very yell yelly at each other i can tell you like if we tried to have this conversation five years ago and we um, yelling at a certain point <laughs> we really would have i feel so somehow i feel like it's made us lose our quote unquote charm but you know what i'm okay with that <laughs> i i'm also I'm, okay with that listen I'm we still okay have our that. we still have our yelly moments but it's more so geared at Stupid animation. <laughs> stupid, yeah, stu stupid animation or 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 nuggets. <laughs> or nuggets, yeah. I, listen, I can I can agree with you on this, but not with the nuggets, Drew. Yes, not the nuggets, nuggets were too far. <laughs> I say they throw a car a credit card on the why is there a credit card in front of me. Well, anyways, that's that that is what I want to talk about. I'm mm. clearly losing it. Oni, be a dear and take us away. Guys, if you enjoyed this episode of the GNA Podcast, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe so you can catch all the episodes of this podcast as they go up weekly. If you haven't already, do follow us on Twitter, follow us on Twitch, and join the party on our Discord. All linked in the description down below. If you'd like, you can even become a channel member or a patron like all these lovely people on screen right now by clicking that join button or joining us on Patreon and get yourself some exclusive perks like access to our members only Discord channel, the Midnight Channel, and joining us for live watches of Higurashi and other shows. So if that sounds appealing to you, consider those options. Drew, do you have anything you'd like to add? Yo, I just saw a picture, like when I was going through the articles, I saw a picture of like, this super moist chocolate cake and I'm like so livid that I do not have that slice in front of me. So basically, moral of the story, treat yourself to something sweet every now and then, guys. You deserve it. I got some pumpkin pie in the fridge. I'm gonna have a slice. Mm, enjoy. Till next time, this has been Sobroni and Do we do? And we'll catch you guys later. Later. Bye.